What's up, everyone? Welcome to Unmasked, where things are discovered, uncovered, brought to the light, and made known. I'm your host, Lamar Barrett, coming live to you from PG County, Maryland. If you're interested in finding out about the untold stories behind being a college coach, this is the show for you. Being a former assistant men's college basketball coach for 16 years, there are so many untold stories behind the scenes in the life of a college basketball coach. Now, let's unmask them. Today's guest is a Hall of Fame player, a longtime assistant coach, a future head coach in the business. I would be remiss if I didn't mention a Navy veteran and a Charlottesville, Virginia native, Matthew Crenshaw. Now, Matthew, like I said, is an outstanding player and IUPUI, and, and I always uh, say Indiana University, Purdue University Institute, and I think I, I may be right. I'm not wrong. He's going to correct me on this. Uh, finished an outstanding career from 2000 to 2004. Uh, like I said, a Hall of Famer inducted in 2010. Uh, played professionally two years after um, he uh, finished playing at IUPUI. Uh, and then he went on and coached at his alma mater, 2006 to 2018. So he had a 12 year stint there with three, uh, two, three different coaches. Uh, actually coached um, under or with uh, his former coach, uh, you know, Coach Ron Hunter. Um, also uh, with Todd uh, Howard, and then he uh, finished up with Jason Gardner, and now he's presently at Ball State, where he started in 2018, um, and uh, just finished up year two, uh, going into year three. Like I said, a young and young, he's as as he's a young and bright assistant. Uh, who I think is going to be a future head coach. I just want to welcome to the show, Matthew Crenshaw. Um, uh, Matt, uh, just want you to say a few words if you can. Well, first off, I want to thank you for having me on the show. Uh, let me give you that quick uh, correction. IUPUI, Indiana University, Purdue University at Indianapolis. Gotcha. And I, you know what I remember was famous? 1999, I actually spent time there at Nike All-American Basketball Camp. Yes. I actually worked there in 1999, summer of 99. I actually drove from Maryland out to Indianapolis. It was actually, actually a great ride. Um, a lot of flat land going to flat land going through Ohio to Indianapolis. And I uh, actually worked there for the summer of 99. One of my players uh, was at that camp. Um, and actually, it's a beautiful campus when I was there uh, on the campus. But I want to say, man, welcome to the show, Matt. Uh, glad that you're here. You know what? We're going to get right into it, man. Let's go ahead and get unmasked. Uh, first question I'd like to ask guests who come on to the show um, there's no handbook, man, in the college coaching. There's none. Um, you know, tell me about your first day, uh, first week, first month, uh, when you go back to your alma mater, uh, having a chance to coach. Because you're two years removed, so it may be some freshmen and sophomores that were still there when you were a senior that still may have been around. Tell me about that, you know, tell me about that, especially when no one gives you direction. You played for Coach Hunter, now you're going to work for Coach Hunter. <laughs> People don't understand. Those are two different things, man. Being a player for him, and now you got to work for him. Talk about that. that that's it right there. Uh, pe people really don't realize the, the difference. You know, a, a person treats you as a, as a coach than as a player. Ron's a great guy, great coach. Uh, we had a good relationship, and uh, it just shifted. Obviously, uh, when I went for that player aspect, and um, Ron was really direct you know, uh, up front with me. It, it was a little whirlwind. You know, I was still debating whether I was going to play, go back and play or not. I just uh, was injured. And uh, it happened to him previously where somebody said they wanted to coach and job. Then they went back overseas for some more money. And me and him was going back and forth for a few weeks about the position. I remember I had braids. <laughs> I still had braids. And, um, we had, you know, we kind of had a visit on campus. I wasn't officially hired yet. And, uh, you know, guys, some of the guys still thought I was a player, you know, on the visit. They didn't know. And uh, then about a week later, coach was like, all right, man, if you come in, you got to cut their hair. Let, let, you know, you, let's, let's get to it. And so uh, I ended up coming in. I, I was a dobo. Didn't really have much direction. You know, he told me what to do. And I had to figure it out myself. Getting this travel done, the buses, the flights. Uh, it all in aspects of understanding the budget. Hey, but we couldn't go stay in the, you know, these five stars. I brought back a couple contracts 
And uh, he was like, no, nah, we can't stay there. You know, it was a little too, too expensive, but me not knowing, I didn't know. So uh, kind of went from there. And then it was, uh, that, that's probably late July, August. And then I want to say in September, right at the end of September, right, you know, that was the October 15th uh, practicing time. I was able to uh, move into assistant coach role and uh, me and one of the assistants, uh, he, he switched to, a, to my role just because, he, you know, his, uh, his employment, he was doing something else and uh, we needed to switch roles. So then that put me on the floor and, uh, you know, I was kind of lost, honestly. All players think they know how to coach and, and what's going on with coaching, but it's a whole different game to try to teach it uh, and, and, and know what to do. So I was lost for a little bit, honestly. I, I, hey, I, I believe you because no one, like you just said, players think they, this job is easy. They look at it. They don't see it. I mean, that's what you, you know, you're like, hey, you just coach. You know, no, it's not just coaching. And I, and I hope these young guys understand that as well uh, as they get a chance to watch this. No, it's not just coaching. Y'all see the finished product, but there's a whole lot to go into this business. And I hope guys understand that. Um, think about recruiting. So it's it's the lifeline of college athletics, man. Like we know that um, you got to get good players, good people. If you want to win in this, in this business, um, talk about like your best and worst recruiting stories that you've had over the years. <laughs> recruiting. And you said it, I used to hear that from Ron 90, 95% of your job. That's what you need to do, you know? And uh, I always hear that every now and then <laughs> when, when I think about it, but honestly, I'd say my worst recruiting story would be uh, we're recruiting a, a player that was really good, kind of went under the radar. I was feeling like, hey, finally I can, I can bring my first recruit. You know, everybody's eager to get their first guy, sign their first guy. And uh, he, he was a good player, but just kind of under radar. We went out, of, we were out of scholarships and uh, the state of Indiana has a program where, you know, you can go to in-state schools public schools uh if you signed up for this program in middle school basically free and uh he he was he was part of this program he qualified for it was able to get him signed committed we do a visit he says he's coming we don't you know obviously we didn't sign any paperwork this is in the spring and we were getting ready to go through them se steps about four or five days later high major comes in offers him a scholarship and he commits <laughs> on the spot. So I'd, I'd say that would be my, my worst, uh, my, my best. And well, to end that story though, because of the relationship, me and that kid stayed in touch. We had a good rapport. He ended up a uh, grad transferring about four or five years later and got him on a bounce back. So it, it all worked out like how it was supposed to, I guess. Uh, I'd say my, my best, probably uh, a situation where it was a kid from Indianapolis. I knew him, knew his family. I, I was really close with him. He went to junior college, junior college, all American. And, and uh, Ron's a guy that's really, really loyal to his players. We had, we had a couple guys at the position and he was like, man, we got these guys. We don't need him. And I'm like, coach, he going to be one of the most athletic players in our league. He can play. He's three minutes away from campus. It, it, it works both ways. And uh, coach was like, no, no, no. So I eventually, I was, because, you know, I, I knew the kid. I was trying to help him and his family. I wanted him to go to college, get, you know, finish from junior college, get his degree. And uh, a couple people I was trying to help in the recruiting process, they couldn't believe it. And then uh, my coach, somehow somebody saw him playing. And, uh, he came and worked out with our guys. Our guys was like, coach, why, why aren't we taking this kid? The kid said, y'all don't want him. Long story short, coach comes, comes at me and tells me, man, you got to be more aggressive. You got to tell me, we just got to take this kid, you know? And uh, we ended up signing him. The kid was a uh, newcomer of the year. Uh, at that time in the uh, Summit League, the most uh, player of the weeks in the history, uh, runner up for, for player of the year, really, really good for us. The kid that went on to get some NBA workouts and play and still playing professionally to this day. 
Wow, two good stories, man. Two good stories. And at least the one that was the worst ended up helping you out in the long run. That's a good thing. Um, what, do you, what did you have to give up slash sacrifice uh, achieving your current level of success? Well, I, I'd say the sacrifice for everyone is all about family time uh, and, and, and time. You know, that, that everybody talks about a work-life balance, but the reality is if you want to be good and you want to grind, there's no such thing. You know, my, 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 my lady, you know, uh, she always tells me, you, you don't have no work balance, you work. It's not, you know, work is your life. And, you know, I, I try to make adjustments. I'm, I, I, I do a little less now that I've been in it, but before I was always feeling like I had to try to prove myself. I was trying to do everything. And then I just realized it, you know, you work hard and you work for the people that you with. It's not about trying to be seen. Your work will show. I agree with you 100%, man. That's an excellent answer. Um, scout reports. And this is what people, now you can always tell, Matt, like, when it's your scout, you, like, you invested in scouts, everyone. So you, because everybody, you want everyone to win. But when it's your scout, you up and down, you're jumping up and down, you're screaming, yelling, you, you know, you put all this work in, you want to get rewarded for it. And so you, you, you tell, you got all the calls, you got all the actions, you, you know, and you go out and then kids, they perform and it's like, yo, we, we knew, we knew everything on the scout, how we, how we lose or, or, you know, like, how did we play well? And then there's times that you could have a tough scout report and you go out and win. I mean, one of those ones that you missed some calls, didn't have all, you know, they ran some actions you didn't see before and you go out and win. But then there's that player that's three for his last 30. He comes in the game and makes four threes. Coach looking at you like, yo, you told me he couldn't shoot. No, I didn't say that, Coach. That's how he struggled. So tell me about the best and worst scout report. Well, <laughs> My worst scout report in, in, in the former players, they like they we still joke about it to this day. Uh, so we started off the season. Like I said, I, I wasn't supposed to be in a assistant role for that year. So coach had assigned the scouts prior and I wasn't on there. You know, the other coaches and in, in uh, me and the guy that switched places, they were doing all the scouts. So we're going to our fourth game. Uh, our best, you know, our best player at the time, uh, George Hill, who, you know, he breaks his foot at a tournament. It's like our second game of the year. And then we finish the tournament, two more games. And then we play a home game versus a 9-1. But I'm not really understanding that. So coach just calls me or says at the practice, hey, you got to scout. Say it's Tuesday. He tells me Tuesday. I got to scout Thursday. Have film ready tomorrow. And uh, <laughs> let's just say it was a sleepless night. I felt like I put the scout together really well. Um, but when I went to get a scout re report for the game, uh, I, I, like I, I felt like I needed to cough and I couldn't really, really talk. So I kept trying to clear my throat, clear my throat. Every, every, every two words, I was like, <clears throat> <clears throat> and, uh, and then uh, it, like the scout felt like it was an hour long. You know, I, I was trying to go through everything tendencies like just not knowing and uh I, I got through it we ended up winning we won by like 20 or something but the fact for me it, it, it was it was awful and <laughs> looking back on it if people don't realize like you can prepare for you ready to think you get in front of the team and those guys are looking at you because they're counting on you and like you get to sweating even more man it don't even matter when it is but because it is in your hands man what, yeah. what do you think your best one was uh, my best one, and, and I'd say it wasn't because of, I say anything I did. It was a, it was a crazy total trip. We were supposed to go play Seton Hall, fly out, flight gets canceled due to weather. We bust down to Louisville, fly into, uh, I think Baltimore and then drive up, uh, to, to, uh, to play New Jersey to play Seton Hall. So we end up playing them. Uh, we end up winning. That's when they had Gonzalez. They, they, you know, they had some players. They, they were, you know, they were a good team, really good guard play. They had a good wing that was getting some NBA looks. And uh, the trip was terrible, but the game starts off. Uh, they get attacked in warmups. So we get the two points for that. And then we, we ended up winning by two. 
I didn't feel like it was nothing that I did or said within the scout, but just the whole trip. And, you know, we got paid. It was a guaranteed game, and we got to win. So, you know, that's that's one I remember for sure. Those are always great when you get the guarantee win. You know, and you know the check is on its way for about eighty, ninety thousand dollars. Those, those are the best ones right there. Yes, coach, sir. Hey, coach, coach, a little bit more happy after those. After those, um, sure. <laughs> what's the biggest challenge, man? You think you've experienced since you become a college coach? Hmm. Uh, the, the biggest challenge for me, I'd say, the initial adjustment. Um, uh, I say the initial adjustment, and I'm I'm not a guy that's a, a self promoter, uh, and I think sometimes that's maybe hurt me. Uh, you know, I'm not the guy that's going to tweet out, "Hey, I did this, I signed this guy." This that that's not me, and uh, I say that's just the biggest challenge because I didn't play at high major school and in 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 those certain things, and you know, as as you know. At the end of the day, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And so for me, initially, that was a, a challenge, not understanding, like, dang, how am I not getting a look? Or I can't get an interview, I can't get a call back. But that's just also not understanding, you know, people want to have people that they know and they trust, because this business is all about the trust factor and, uh, and being comfortable, because it's so much that goes on and happens behind the scenes. You have to be comfortable and know people that you're working with. So I, I'd say probably, those couple things would be it. So true. Now, I'm going to piggyback on this because I like to ask this question. Like I said before, I think you got a chance. I've watched you for a long time. Um, like, do you find that there are things about you that people might misunderstand? Like, what are they? Uh, can, you, can you go back for me? It, it broke up. Yeah. Yeah, I said, do you ever find that there are things about you that people might misunderstand? Uh, not really. I'd say that I'm, I'm a straight shooter. Uh, I'm a loyal guy. Um, you know, the, as people like to say real, um, and, and, and I'm gonna speak, you know, I'm, I'm gonna speak the truth. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you what I think. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna, uh, you know, I'm not just gonna try to befriend people for it to help me. You know, um, I, I try to have mutual and respectful on both sides relationships. So uh, maybe sometimes people think that I'm standoffish. It's just, hey, I may not know someone and you know, I'm gonna speak and then I'm gonna go you know, do my job and, and watch the games. And if I know somebody, yeah, I may be more apt to talk to them, but if not, I'm just working. So a lot of times I've heard, man, I thought he was standoffish. I thought he wasn't a good dude. But then I hear, oh man, Chris, cool. He's a, he's a good person, he's a good dude. So I, I probably say that, you know, people think that I may be standoffish at times just because of, I'm, I'm not always out going trying to talk to people that I don't know. I, I understand, man. I understand you 100%. Like, we all educators and teachers in this business. Um, you've had some good guys that you've played for going back to high school, college, some guys you've worked with. But, like, what do you try to teach your players besides basketball? Well, that's it. The first thing I always start with, even in the recruiting process, man, it's the ball's going to stop. It's about life. Um, for me, uh, mentorship, uh, fatherhood, uh, being active, doing stuff in the community, you know, so th those are things that, that, that have always stick, um, meant something to me. So I always try to show those guys, whether it's taking them out in the community, doing Habitat for Humanity, not, not the mandated stuff by your university or athletic department, but personal stuff that I do, where I, you know, take guys to food pantries. You know, we've done Habitat for Humanity, clean up the neighborhood, just, just, just those little things that uh, to teach them about life and, and try to help prepare them. And, and then I just felt like I'm always a person that uh, they can come talk to. And uh, I don't judge them. And then, you know, it's hard at sometimes as an assistant you have to keep their trust and some things you can share with the head coach. And then sometimes, you know, stuff needs to stay private. So understanding that balance, uh, I think that's allowed me to get a lot of trust with the guys and it's allowed for, you know, lifelong relationships. That's, that's so true, man. I, I, I'm, I feel you cause I'm the same way. Like there is stuff that you, you know, when you, when they can come to you and talk to you about anything and they're not worried about it going back to coach and like, 
unless unless they're saying, I need you to say this to coach before I say it. I, <laughs> I, I feel you on that one. I definitely feel you on that one. Yeah. Um, what are your best and worst memories in coaching? Mm. Oof. Worst memory. Probably be commerce tournament loss in the finals against all Roberts. It was one of those situations where you brought up earlier, a guy the previous night in the, in the semifinals went 0 for 7 from 3. But we knew he was a shooter and, you know, we played him twice previously that year. So we knew he could shoot the ball. I was probably not as aggressive in my, in my, in relaying my thoughts and message to coach Hunter. Um, Cause at times we would uh, triangle in two or boxing one players, even though we played a matchup, uh, we, we would have some wrinkles and uh, I kind of suggested it, but I wasn't as firm and uh, as I should have been going into that and talking to him about what, you know, what I thought, because I said, Hey, I think this guy, he was over for seven. He's going to make a couple tonight. And, you know, those couple can beat us and made about five. And, and those five, you know, we lost a close game. And, and, and I always look back, man, I should have been more aggressive and uh, just talking to coach and really uh, sharing what I thought. Anything on best? The best? You remember that? I know, you, yeah, you have a lot of those that, you know, stick up. Yeah. The best? Mm, I, I, I'd honestly say, <laughs> <laughs> I have a few, but uh, I I'll say this one. Honestly, uh, last year, you know, at Ball State, uh, we, we played at Georgia Tech. And, uh, you know, nobody picked us to win. We felt like we could win because of how we play and uh, how they defended. And uh, we went into an ACC opponent, and, and we won by 20-plus. You know, I think it ended up being like 20 or 18, but it was really a 30-point game. And... Uh, you know, we played well, and um, it wasn't my, it was not my scout, but it was just a great overall team win. Everybody was happy. Everybody, all the players were through the game, were cheering for each other, you know, and it was how you want to see your team be, um, you know, as you look down the bench or, or as you look out on the floor. I'd say that, and we had a game similar at the end of the year. You know, we had a chance to win the, win the MAC West. We had to go on the road at uh, Northern Illinois. And we played them at their floor, senior night. They got some all-conference guys. And we were able to win on their floor by 20. And um, we was primed and feeling really good going into the conference tournament last year. Awesome, man. Like, now I'm going to ask you this, because you you talk about stress. Like, you you were a player. You, I mean, you were in the military. So I, we talk about basketball. Right? That's not stress. But, like, what, what, what was the most stressful situation you think you faced? just in, in basketball alone. I mean, you get back to your alma mater, so you were there for 12 years, but, like, what do you think? Any, is there a stressful situation you might have faced? Uh, probably the, the most stressful situation for me probably would be just that, the alma mater initially. Um, person being well-respected, known, knows everybody. Uh, and, and it was different for Ron, but at times I felt it with, other coaches because I had different relationships and connections uh, and, and different people knew me, you know, I think it was stressful from, from a work standpoint at times, you know, when maybe your head coach doesn't know them, Ron knew everybody. So it wasn't no big deal, but you know, as a, as a player and I had, you know, a lot of success and um, I, I, I was a person that always maintained relationships and I was able to go have lunches, dinners with, people, you know, in high positions on campus and uh, doing it because that's what I've always done and, and relationships are important to me and being genuine. It wasn't anything that I was positioning, you know, for a job or anything like that. So I think that what I'd say probably was the, the, the stressful, most stressful part for me. But other than that, um, the losses, man, as a competitor, man, you hate to lose. And, uh, you know, I, I took it, I took it so personal at first, and um, I was like, man, I'm not going to be able to do this. And, you know, I think that was just some mentorship, talking to Coach and Coach Hunter, Coach Howard, guys that were my staff, Coach Price, older guys that have been in the game and, and understood of 
hey man, all, you do your best to prepare them. That's all you can do. You you can't, you know, go home, stay up night. So th those things, uh, the stress of losing, uh, and the work ethic piece. Like I was a player. I'm not gonna say, hey, I was that guy that was in the gym because we didn't have a practice facility, but I was a guy that that uh, I've had to get kicked out the gym before. You know, hey man, you're not supposed to be in here. So I, I was that guy, but I expected guys when you know as I got into coaching, like man, you're not gonna stay extra and work. Hey man, I'm here for you. And I and I and since I've gotten into coaching, I've always been the guy to say, hey, I'll come early one morning or I'll come at night so we can get some extra work. Just let me know. Let's plan it out. And I offer that to everybody. And then when like only one or two guys are taking up on that, I was kind of confused. And I'm like, man. And, and one player, and I think it was like my second or third, it was my going into my third season. It was one of my teammates. He ended up red shirt in my year, but he was still around the program. And he was like, hey, man, like, you're going to be a good coach. You're good. But just remember, everybody is not as passionate as you. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, hey, look, man, like, I'm here to be on a team. You know, I'm getting my college paid for. And I, but I'm going to work in the business world. I'm not trying to be a pro. And so once I started thinking it from that aspect, it, it really helped me in my career. Awesome. I mean, sometimes you listen to a player, it, it helps you a lot of times. A lot of people don't understand that one as well. Um, what is the strangest thing a player has done outside of the basketball court? Strangest thing. Oof. Hmm. As you know, we, we, you see, you got some wild guys. Even though, you know, they're great kids, but they still, like, you'd be like, wow, I can't believe this person did that. <laughs> well, well, what I'll say is this. So when, when I was uh, in the dobo position before I was the assistant coach, I was, uh, I was working. Uh, you know, my, my uh, degree was in criminal justice. So I was a probation officer part-time. And uh, during, during that time, I was working – at the uh, intake facility, basically, when you get arrested, the, the processing center. So I was working there, and uh, I'd say seeing about two or three guys come in <laughs> would probably be the strangest thing, you know, getting those guys coming in. And it was minor stuff, um, license, you know, driving a, a ticket. They, they didn't know their license was suspended, those type of things. But that shock. Then they look up, they see me. I'm looking over the table, making sure I see them. I'm checking, checking the paperwork. And, uh, you know, so that, I, I'd say that, just just having uh, to deal with issues like that would probably have been the strangest thing. Awesome. Uh, that, that is, that's pretty good. Like, I know they were just as shocked to see you there. I'm sure that. Um, listen, I know, like I talked about before, I think you'll be a terrific head coach. Um, you, you, you were at your alma mater for a long time. You got a chance to work with Ron Hunter. Got a chance to work with Jason Gardner, who's a terrific player. You know, um, I know what, he, you know what he did at IUPU. I just remember seeing Jason a lot on the road. Um, and that's why I probably got to actually know you first, like, through probably Jason. But um, at the same time, like, you, you're actually working with, 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 you know, James now, Coach Whitford. I've been knowing him since his Miami, Ohio days. So you look at it like, what type of program, um, and, and I'm looking at it as a whole, administrative, like what type of program would you look at that you would like to run one day? And what are your expectations from that program? Well, I, I'd say for me, the program that I'm looking at, honestly, I don't have any expectations. I just want the opportunity. Uh, a lot of people are picky. You know, some jobs are going to be bad for some people. But I believe in the job is, is all about what you make it. And that's kind of what uh, I learned from a high school coach. And then I learned from Ron Hunter, especially, you know, like, you know, at the time we didn't have all the facilities that a lot of people have, but we were able to be successful. And so, you know, my mentality is blue collar, hard worker. So, uh, and you find ways to make things happen. You know, at the city of Indianapolis, they, there were things that you could do. There were gyms, there were people, there were trainers. So uh, there was ways to make things work. And, uh, for me, I, I don't have any expectations. Obviously, you want to have, from an administrative standpoint, you want to work with people that uh, explain their vision and that, that are transparent with you and um, let you know what they're looking for. And, and you can have an open dialogue and you, and you can talk to them. 
other than that, I think everybody knows they have to win. At, at, at some point, you know, you just want to be given an opportunity to win. In some situations, it's going to take uh, more time than others. So, I, I, don't I love that answer. Love yeah. that answer. Uh, and, and like you said, administrators have to be got to be open dialogue, got to be supportive from the top to the bottom. That's what you know. A lot of times, you go to a situation where administration don't even really care about athletics. I mean, you, you can't be that way. Like, no, you need them to care about athletics. You need support from the athletic department and so on. So I, 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 I love your answer on that, man. Um, what's the biggest accomplishment you think you've experienced since you've been in college coach? Um, the biggest accomplishment, me being in college coaching, I'd have to say numerous um, men getting their degrees to me. That that that's the most uh, important thing, man. It's it's I've ha I've had guys, you know, obviously, you know, playing the NBA, get NBA workouts, playing the summer league. But at the end of the day, when you look back on it, we don't even really talk about playing uh, or playing the NBA. We'll talk about college experiences, and we talk about life and and, and them having their degree and getting guys to go back and finish, um, because that that that's that's been my mission and I feel like as a university somewhat you're using the student athletes to promote your university and bring recognition and, and those things with the success of the athletic program so you have to you know I always tell them you have to use the university to make sure you get your degree and I've had multiple um, I think it might be close to eight or guys either get their master's or get a, a certificate in uh you know a master certificate so that was just something that that I, I pushed and once you know the university started paying for summer school um you know if, if you take things seriously you should at least finish in three years and work on your masters awesome man that's that's awesome like this will be turned a little bit so might have you thinking a little bit what movie or tv show title best describes your work or your week, I'm gonna say your week, not even your work, your week. Hmm. Man. Oh no, on that one, what, what describes my week? Uh, I don't know, man, I'm not a TV dude, man. Um, let me think on that one. You may have to skip that when we come back. We'll come back. TV show or movie, so we'll come back on that. Um, what's your favorite word or phrase? Mm. Uh, favorite show or phrase probably would have to be uh, the marathon continues, man. <laughs> marathon continues, okay. You just, I like that. Marathon continues. Um, What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Uh, the the best advice I've been given is is uh, no matter where you are, where you're at, somebody's always watching you. Um, you're always a, um, a a role model or somebody you know to someone that could be looking up to you. Um, and it's always gonna be someone's first time maybe meeting you or seeing you. So um, carry yourself in, in that way. I love it, I love it. What does uh, success mean to you? Success to me means uh, first and foremost, players graduating, uh, ready to be productive members of society in their communities, whether it's where they went to school at, or back home, uh, making an impact in some way, um, spreading light and knowledge to, to the ones that come after them. And then obviously you, you want to win, you, you know, you want to have some wins because winning brings enjoyment. You know, when you're happy, it, it makes things a lot of things more fun. So uh, you want to win, but success to me is just about uh, the impact that you can have on the lives and, um, you know, their lives not just for those four years, but, you know, for the next 40 years. Awesome, man. 
Now, where is your happy place? We know there's some tough days in this business, man. Like, like where's your happy place? Honestly, uh, for me, my happy place has probably been like COVID. <laughs> you know, co you know, for me, like COVID bothered a lot of people. For me, I I've been fine. Um, you know, from a from a mental health standpoint and those things that uh the only thing I missed was, you know, being in the gym and having interaction with the players and, and helping them, you know, work on their game and just, you know, continue to pour into them. But for me, being at home, sometimes being by myself, um, you know, I can do that a couple of days or whatever it may be. But, you know, I got the computer, can watch some basketball and, and, and relax. But for me, a happy place probably be just uh, relaxing by myself or every now and then, you know, catching up, catching up with the, the crew or with my fraternity brothers. Awesome. Now, you said this earlier because I, I truly believe this about you. You're not a self-promoter. Uh, but if you had to choose three adjectives to describe yourself, which would you choose? Uh, loyal, dependable, hard worker. Awesome. Um, now, what qualities do you uh, value in the people with whom you spend time? Trust, transparency, respect. That's that's just kind of some things I live my live my life and base that around. Like, yeah. obviously, I understand trust. And it takes time, but if you're transparent and honest with people, that relationship can grow and cultivate. Um, so I just want to be around good people, um, and you know we 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 can impact and and um, share share with one another. Awesome, man! And like, what person and or event has had the most influence on your life? That's, that's tough. Um, one person that, that has a big impact, I can't say the most, but I can say one person that had the, 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 a big impact for me and is the reason why I got into coaching would be my high school coach. Um, you know, Billy Gillespie is for the fact that um, at times he would, you know, just taking time to be there for you to have your conversations, maybe pick you up, take you home, um, those things, and, and, and keep it real with you. And at the same time, work, work you to death, you know, you know, that, you know, sh showing you hard work. And um, he was a big guy to hold guys accountable. It didn't matter if you were the number one guy or you were the 15 guy on the team. Everybody was going to be held to that same standard. Man, that's good. Billy Gillespie. And I, I mean, and, you know, that, that's, that was, that's, that's having a great high school coach right there. Um, I like to end with this question all the time, just, I mean, you, you travel that path. Like, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your young self or younger self to prepare for as an assistant coach? Um, knowing what I know now, I tell my younger self to, um, to be willing to go, go outside of your comfort zone, um, really identify uh, people that, that, you know, I may have identified, I felt like were good coaches and guys I may have admired or like what they did, maybe reaching out to them, trying to talk to them, um, call them, even if they don't respond, maybe try again. You know, because right now I think if I try to reach out to guys, they don't respond and um, I'll move on. But not understanding. Now I fully understand that uh, that how it is in, in the business and, and how it goes. And I can say one guy, and it wasn't so much about me playing, or this is when I was in the military and I was, you know, looking at going to college. I'll never forget Cliff Warren. He returned the call and, 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 and we talked. And, you know, at the time, and players don't realize what level, where they should be playing at and those things. So just uh, taking time out to, to follow up with people, call, call people that I admire, but also taking time to return emails and, and phone calls. Just make sure you do that. Awesome. Cliff Warren, that's my guy, man. We go way back to we were uh we were um roommates at Georgetown basketball camp. So we so I go way back in Cliff yeah. Warren. Um <laughs> so um hey Matt man, I want to thank you again, man, for being a guest on the show and being unmasked. Is there anything you want to say to uh the viewers before we go? 
uh, just say thank you for this opportunity, man, and uh, really appreciate it. Um, always admire you from, from American to ODU days and just seeing you always carried yourself uh, well out on, you know, on the road and you're a personable person um, and, you, and you would talk to guys. So, you know, definitely um, unique. A lot of guys aren't that way. Um, you never carried yourself, you know, like you bigger than anybody. So that's one thing I always wanted to admire. I want to say that on the show, I believe on, you know, giving people their roses, man, while, while you can. So, man, uh, wish nothing but best for you and yours and uh for those that you know um young people young young men young women willing to get into the game that want to get into the game uh please look me up I i'll take my time out to call you uh talk to you give you some advice that 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 i feel that helped me or you know i'll listen to you and and, and i'm willing to, to share anything that i've learned with anyone well, I appreciate, man, those great words, man. That, that means a lot. Um, and like I said, I know you'll do big things in this business. You'll continue to work. You work with some good people, and you still work with a great guy. Um, so uh, with saying that, I want to thank the viewers for watching another great show. Stay tuned for the next guest as we get them unmasked. See you next time, and stay safe.